annual purge has commenced. We ready? For the next 12 hours, all crime is legal. Emergency services will be unavailable. We'll be fine just like always. Your government thanks you for your participation. Anybody tries to come in, you blast them. Just remember all the good the Purge does. Rated R. Hello, I'm the Universal Critic. I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want. As a YouTuber, I've seen people say some pretty nasty things to... to other people through the internet. From dirty jokes to just outright threats. Why do people act that way? Because online they can be anonymous, and you'd be surprised what people will do when they, when they know they can get away with it. The film I am reviewing today, The Purge, takes that anonymity and translates it to the real world, showing us a future where, for one night a year, all crime is legal. At least, that's what the film attempts to do. But does it, su does it succeed? Well, it does and it doesn't. Let me explain. First, let's discuss the characters and the actual plot. Ethan Hawke and Lita Headey played the play this wealthy couple called the Sandons, who live in a gated community with their teenage daughter and younger son. Normally, during the titular, titular purge, they seal up their house and just wait it out, but this time, the son lets in a homeless man screaming for help, and the family is soon confronted by the gang that was chasing him. The family is given an ultimatum. Either give up the homeless man, or the gang will break in and kill all of them. On paper, this sounds like a very creepy premise, that delivers some strong commentary about the, uh, the nature of social violence and the need for self-preservation versus your sense of right and wrong. And while the film does deliver some scares, ultimately the story is kind of a letdown. The idea behind the attack is that these are normal people who are releasing their inhibitions, or releasing the beast, as the characters call it. Yeah, that's really something that's in the movie. But the problem is that the gang aren't played like normal people normal people who are just letting, just, who have just abandoned self-control, they act like serial killers, badly written serial killers. They're all laughing and dancing as they commit their crimes, and they wear masks, even though they have no reason to hide their identity, because they can't be punished for what they're doing during this night, but whatever. Honestly, I was half expecting their leader to start bursting out, to burst out singing, singing in the rain, while he was doing all this. That's how campy they were. And also, at first I thought the gang were meant to be the Sandin's neighbors, but they aren't. They're just sort of random people. And so the commentary about social violence mostly falls flat because we don't get attached to the characters. However, there is a twist near the end of the movie involving the Sandin's neighbors, but that also falls rather flat because, again, we don't spend very much time with them and before that, and so we don't feel the emotional impact they were trying to go for. Not to say the social commentary is entirely lost, but it's just not handled very well. Most of the time it's either just shoved aside or people, or they literally spell it out for you. Another flaw in the film is the ending. I won't spoil it for you, but the ending tries to make it seem like it's a happy one and that everything will be okay now, and things will be okay at least until next year when the purge happens all over again, but that's all I can say without giving spoilers. As for the acting, well, Ethan Hawke and Lena Headey do a decent job, but their characters aren't given much development, at least not until like the last 20 minutes or so of the film. As I mentioned early, oh uh, wait, sorry, the actors who play the kids are also okay, but again, they don't have much to work with. As I mentioned before, the son is the one who is sympathetic to victims of the purge, and I thought that didn't make much sense. I thought it should have been the daughter who was the sympathizer. See, the son is about 12 years old and the girl is about 16, and they established that the purge has only been occurring for less than a decade. So, by that logic, the girl at least somewhat knew a time period before the purge, whereas the boy did not. Wouldn't it make more sense then for the girl to be more uncomfortable with the purge than the boy? but that's just my opinion. As for the actual horror aspect of the film, well, there are some decent scares in the movie, and while the twist towards the end is a bit weak, it's still fairly unexpected. I didn't see it coming, I'll have to say that. 
Overall, I'd say wait until this movie comes out on DVD and give it a rental then. And... But, all, but on the whole, I enjoyed it, even though it does... And though it does squander it a good chunk of its potential, it's at least nice to see a horror film that's at least attempting to be intelligent. I'm the Universal Critic. I talk about whatever I want, whenever I want. Goodbye.